everybody. Welcome to the Fight Network Studios. I'm your host, John Ramdean, alongside Bazooka Joe, Joseph Feltolini, as we are heading into Glory 27 in Chicago this Friday night. Of course, the main event, the middleweight championship on the line, Simon Marcus taking on Artem Levin, the third meeting between these two individuals. Uh, the last fight kind of ending in controversy. Uh, many people believe, especially because the point was taken, it should have gone to Simon Marcus. How did you uh, see that fight? You know what? It was a really close fight. I can't take that away from uh, Simon or Artem. But you know what? That point, uh, in my opinion, the fight should have gone to Simon Marcus there. No Canadian bias here, but uh, you know, from, uh, from an analyst uh, perspective, uh, that fight should have gone to Simon Marcus. Of course, uh, everybody, if you're a fan of kickboxing, you're a fan of glory. Uh, a friend of yours, Rob Thomas, is going to be in action uh, in a middleweight tournament, two fights in one night. What can you tell us about this young Man, You spent some time with him. Well, I mean, just as the tournament itself is crazy, yeah. you know, you have a, a tournament format where they're fighting two fights in one night. Uh, to me, uh, I got to do that uh, in my career in Japan, and it's not easy. And a big player in this game is the mental aspect of it. And again, Rob Thomas, and we got to work throughout this camp, and kind of giving him that introduction uh, from the difference between kickboxing and Muay Thai. And um, mentally, I feel Robert Thomas is very strong. And to win a tournament, uh, I think the key is mental. Um, he's fighting his first fight against Wayne Barrett, who, again, is coming off a four-fight uh, losing streak. Again, I think that's where the mental game is going to be in Robert Thomas's favorite. And, you know, uh, a good night um, for Robert means a title shot against the winner of Artem and Simon. So there's a lot on the line for uh, such a young athlete like Robert Thomas. But at the same time for Barrett, he understands he's under the gun, kind of mm -hmm. back against the wall. Very athletic. You look back at his fights with Joe Schilling and Artem Levin, a lot of movement. Uh, mm -hmm. Is there something that... Um, Thomas needs to do to figure that out? Well, I think that's the evolution of, of Rob. Um, Muay Thai has a very strong forward base, and you know, it's more hit for hit, you know, punch for punch, kick for kick. Where kickboxing, you kind of have a little bit more of boxing footwork. So um, to be successful, um, you have to kind of learn how to move and kind of use your distance and range. And uh, some of the biggest conversations we had in our training is once you fully understand distance and you fully understand movement, every fight becomes easy. And he has to, you know, be aware that um, Wayne Barrett is trying to pull him in, trying to draw him in so he can use his counterattacks. So a lot of us is kind of, you know, don't overengage, keep your distance, use your movement which that'll make a hard fight for Wayne Barrett, someone who doesn't constantly move forward. And I think Barrett is expecting Rob Thomas to keep coming forward. Is it a, an easy transition for fighters? We know that Simon Marcus, for example, comes from that Muay Thai background, glory modified kickboxing. Mm -hmm. Is it easy for a lot of fighters to, to adapt to the, to the rules and the, 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 the way things are set up in glory? Well, I like to give the analogy of, you know, there's uh, badminton and squash. You know, just because they're both racket sports doesn't necessarily mean they're exactly the same. Um, there is a lot of differences. Um, in my career, um, I fought two full rules Muay Thai fights, and um, for me, it was a totally different fight. I like to get in there and I like to throw a lot of combinations and, you know, end with heavy low kicks. So my opponents would just sit there and try to use the big elbows or clinch me up and tie me up. So there is a little bit of an advantage. Um, you know, for Muay Thai fighters in Muay Thai rules. Now, when you get a Muay Thai fighter and you bring them into kickboxing, it's a little different. You don't, not having that clinch in that elbow game, you kind of have to pick the pace up a little bit. Um, you can't rely on, you know, the five slower rounds, and um, you don't have time to let the fight unfold. It's more of a, you know, sprint compared to a marathon run. So there is little slight differences, and um, I feel another big difference is boxing. Um, you know, a lot of guys, like I mean, Simon Marcus is now using his boxing, yeah. and, you know, he's going to boxing gyms to spar and kind of developing his hands and his movements. So um, there is difference, little differences, but um, in the big picture, they play a big difference, in my opinion. You now have a new role, going to be sitting cage side calling uh, the broadcast. Uh, what are some of the things you've learned, how, that you've needed to learn how to do to get yourself pre prepared for this new role? Well, you know what? It's actually just studying. You yeah. know, it's study, study, study. And I feel now uh, in this new role, I've 
um, you know, developed into a smarter um, coach, into a smarter fighter, into a smarter athlete. You know, I'm sitting here, you know, all day analyzing yeah. fights. And to me, again, you know, I've never really looked, and I'm even watching back some of my old fights, and I'm thinking, what the heck was I doing there, you know? Like, <laughs> I wish I knew what I knew now back when I was actually in the ring. But I guess that's the evolution, um, you know, of a fighter into a coach. But this role has really opened my eyes to, you know, different aspects and, you know, the, the, the real detail of the sport, which, you know, I never really got to look at. So for me, but it's an exciting role, man, to sit there and especially to start uh, this role off in Chicago and um, basically talking about my friends. You yeah. know, all of these guys, I've cut weight with these guys. I fought, you know, um, on, on different shows around the U.S. with these guys. And, you know, Robert Thomas, um, I got to see him as a 14-year-old kid, um, you know, uh, at 135 pounds or 125 pounds. Um, to the now fighting for world title. So getting to see the evolution of these guys and knowing that I've fought and hung out with these guys um, should make the job pretty easy. Getting to see that next crop of fighters, obviously anybody that uh, watches combat sports, they understand that there, there's safety concerns. This is a dangerous sport, something you've had to deal with yeah. in, in your career. We've heard many fighters, whether it be uh, kickboxing, Muay Thai, or mixed martial arts, talk about the importance of keeping your head safe. What would you tell fighters moving forward uh, in order to make sure that their brain is as healthy as it possibly can be coming out of uh, a difficult situation? sport like kickboxing first thing is education 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 yeah. you know you need to know what is happening in your training and you need to recognize the signs and symptoms you know it doesn't necessarily have to be a brain injury but you know it could be a knee back neck injuries I think you just need to recognize the signs and one of the hardest things as an athlete is to pull yourself back especially when you're on this big run and you have all this momentum mm -hmm. going uh, one of the hardest things to do is pull back and say, you know what, I can't train today or I can't fight because of an injury. And a lot of times the people surrounding you are encouraging you to, you know, keep going, train harder, spar a little harder. Um, so you have to kind of, as an individual, understand the signs and the symptoms and be able to pull yourself back when needed. Obviously, uh, it's a, a serious topic that a lot of people are talking about. Uh, how do you get the word out there? How do you get the word out to coaches and, and these youngsters that because we've heard over time, I had a chance to talk to former heavyweight champion Cain Velasquez, mm -hmm. who said that basically this is what we were taught to get through the grind, to push through. The only way you're gonna be able to deal with the real fire is by getting as close to the fire as humanly possible before you step into the competition ring. Yeah, it's just, I think guys just really need to do the education on themselves and you know, hopefully fighters like myself and other fighters who have gone through similar situations um, you know, one of my big idols in the sport who I got to watch um, and kind of, um, you know, be a role model for me was Gary Goodridge. And he's dealing with kind of, you know, very serious uh, brain issues. Um, so I think people just really need to take this serious. And a lot of times we look at that, it won't happen to me. And, you know, and I'd be the first person to admit uh, a lot of times in my career, everyone was like, aren't you worried about brain injuries? My first response, nah, it won't happen to me. So I think understanding um, from an early time that it can happen to you and just making sure that you're doing the proper steps. All the action going down February 27th in Chicago. We're going to put you on the hot seat. Simon Marcus, Artem Levin, number three. Who is going home with the championship? I'm being biased. Simon Marcus. Simon Marcus, Bazooka Joe, Joe Valtellini giving us the word. All the action going down this Friday night at Hoffman Estates in Illinois.